Angie Taylor contacted me asking me if we had a tool that duplicated the Premiere Pro's Automate to Sequence feature. Uh, we didn't at the time, so I created one. So here it is. This is the Automate to Sequence tool in After Effects. It mimics most of the functionality in the Premiere Pro tool, but of course it's slightly modified to work within the After Effects realm. So when you first launch it, which by the way, you can just dock it if you'd like, um, you'll see that the marker layer asks you to select the comp and refresh. So here's my comp with my pre-comps that I want to sequence. And when I go ahead and hit refresh, it says no layer with markers found. That's because there's no marker layer. So we're gonna go ahead and create a marker layer and just on a no layer. But you know, of course, this can be any, any layer in your comp. It doesn't have to be a null. Uh, layer and it can also of course the, the markers can, uh, can uh, it's possible that the markers came from wherever you came there whether you're sequencing to a beat track or if you imported the markers from something else um, that's obviously not relevant here so once you have your markers you can go ahead and select your layers that you want to sequence well first I, I want to once I've set my my null my marker layer I'm going to go ahead and refresh and so now I you can see it lets me select the marker layer. Now, for example, here I'm gonna set a, uh, move that around, I'm gonna set a marker for this. Let's just say that you know I had two layers with markers. When I hit refresh, you'll see now that I have both the layers with markers, so I, you gotta make sure that you select the correct one as your marker layer, which in this case is the null four layer. Now, uh, the next thing down here is ordering. Uh, do I want to sequence them based on the order that I select them in, or do I want him to go in layer index? So if you want to select them in a specific order, so for example, I'm going to select this one with the weird endpoint first. So I'm going to go ahead and select that. Now on Mac, you hold down command. On Windows, you would hold down control and then select the rest of your order however you want. So once you do that, I'm going to set my overlap to zero for now. And I'm just going to say shift layers. I'm going to hit sequence. So now, as you can see, it put the layer with the marker first and then the other ones in the order I selected them. And if you can see by the little uh, black triangle, it shifted the layer. By shifted, I mean it actually took it and moved it like this uh, to where the markers were. And then it set the out points before the next marker. Now, if I go ahead and undo this and I switch this to set in point and I go ahead and sequence layers, now you can see that the layers are all left in place, i.e. at the beginning. And then the endpoints get slid. So this particular layer with where when the endpoints used to be set here with the marker, it got the endpoint was reset and set where this marker was. So that's the difference here in the methods. I'm gonna go ahead and undo this. Now you can also just go ahead and say use it based on layer index order. And so no matter how I selected them, when I sequence them, it's going to sequence them based on their index from the bottom up. So kind of almost like a reverse. And the thinking here uh, is that if you do have an overlap, you're going to want to have them always go from the bottom up. So that's why it orders them from the bottom up like that. Of course, if you don't like that, you can, of course, just select them from the top down and then select your own selection order. And then it would just do it like that, right? So let me undo that again. So let's go back here to uh, layer index order. And I'm going to now choose an overlap. So I'm going to go ahead and say a five frame overlap. So I'm going to go ahead now and shift the layers. And so if I go and I look now and I zoom in here, you can see now that there is a one, two, three, four, five frame overlap of the top layer with the bottom layer which is pretty cool. And then finally, we can add an opacity blend. So I'm going to go ahead and undo. If I turn on the opacity blend, and I go ahead and sequence layers, it's going to say, ah, I got an error. It's basically telling me that there's already some opacity keyframes. So I'm going to hit no to stop the operation for now. If I hit T, you can see that the layers had opacity keyframes. So if you wanted to do an opacity blend, you of course cannot have any opacity keyframes. So I can either delete them in advance or when you do the operation, it offers to delete them for you. So I'll just go ahead and say yes. So now it, uh, as you can see, it did not delete the uh, keyframes from the bottom layer because that was not necessary. But when we come in here and we see the other ones, you can see that 
it did a, a nice little opacity ramp up from zero to a hundred uh, for five frames, you know, for the for the layer. So you can actually do like you know quick dissolves or whatever. So that's it in a cinch. That is automate to sequence for After Effects. And thanks Angie Taylor for requesting this tool.